Hey guys, this is a tutorial for the Laguna Seca track in the Mazda Miata. I made this quickly for my autocross club, but I've had a few requests to do this track, so I thought I'd help out. Uh, some important things to a fast and consistent lap are apexes, exits, and using all the track and curves. It's really important to have those pieces in place before you really start to attack the rest of the course. So I hope this helps. and. Turn one is barely a turn, but it is a place that you can pick up some time. You'll be track left close to the wall and just keep a tight line and you can even go through the pylons if you want. Turn two or the Andretti hairpin can be a very tricky corner. Because it's downhill, it's easy to lock up a brake. So what I do is I let the car run out to the outside curb along the, uh, the white line and I start braking around the three marker. I try to keep my hands as straight as possible, especially at the start, and as I get close to a turn, I move my hands very slowly on turn in. This helps to really stable the car on entry. In the middle of turn two, I'm waiting on the front end. I'm trying to keep a tight line for the apex curbs, especially the second half. If I stay tight on the left, I can get on the throttle really early and the car will rotate really nicely out of the curb. You can let the car track out to the outside and not have to fight with it too much. I track left with the car for turn three and align the left side of the wheels with the curbing. Then I turn in really late after giving a quick break, so late that I'm turning in just before the gray area of the curb. On the right side uh, apex you can see a little red uh, concrete area. That's pretty much what I'm trying to hit. I mean I don't want to hit it but I want to be close to it and then I let the car run out from there. I stay left on the run up to turn four and turn in from the curb again. I want to keep my hands nice and smooth here and give a little lift in the middle just to get the car to rotate well through this corner. Turn 5 is a really important corner for a fast lap and it's all about the exit. I track over to the right with the car and break pretty late at around the 2 marker. I can break really late because the gradient into the corner. I want to turn in late as you can see again, I'm turning in from the gray portion of the curb, really smooth with my hands, and then I want to run up the left side curb the whole way. The apex is still that little red marker, but I want to stay tight along the left side. And I really want to focus on getting on the throttle really early as I need all the RPMs on the car I can get up the hill. Under the bridge, I want to be on the right side curbing to set up for turn six. I want to use all the track as I can because I want to open up the, the line into this corner. I do a smooth turn in and aim for the, left, uh, the red apex again and a quick lift just to rotate and get the nose in and back on the throttle really hard. As I go up the hill, I'm going to stay to the left side because I think it's less of a gradient and you're going to be there anyways for the corkscrew. Turn 7 is a little right-hander that feeds you into the corkscrew, but it's really important because you got to get on the left side curbing and then get your wheels straight as you go over the hump. Entering the corkscrew, I really want to make sure the car is to the right side but as straight as possible. I don't want to be turning right as I brake. I look for my turn 8 apex and really, really, really want to be on top of this apex on the left side. If I get it right, I should be able to power down the whole corkscrew and that really helps with settling the car on the way down. If I've done it correctly, I should be aiming for this tree dead ahead of me and I should be on the throttle really early and I 
might be able to just clip the inside gravel on the way down. I don't do it in this clip, but it happens fairly often when I'm doing laps. I want to stay to the right as far as I can because I will be tracked to the right for the next downhill left. Turn 9 is a really difficult corner for me. I always like to track to the right side just before it, almost at the curb, turn in and sight my apex really early, which is again the little red marker. I want to be really close to that red marker so I lift off the gas and when I'm coming down I want to apply the throttle gently so that I don't overload the front end. I let the car track out from there and hit a shift just before the curbing on the right side. Turn 10 is a great corner because you've got a lot of camber in the in the middle. So I come down, get my wheels onto the left curbing, do a hard brake. I can't seem to ever really uh, snag a brake here. So a really hard brake, a quick downshift, and let the car run in with a lot of speed. And get on the throttle really early because you've got so much camber down there, it'll spit you out really well. On the run down to the last turn, I always bounce off rev limiter a few times. It's much faster than going up into fourth. Just keep it uh, in third, and it really helps with braking into turn 11. So I want to stay on the right side, get my wheels on the curb again, brake down hard, and turn in late again here. When I, when I turn in, I want to be completely focused on keeping the car as neutral out of the corner as I can. I'll even... Un induce a little understeer turning in very sharply just to get the front pushing so I don't have to deal with the back end moving all over the place. I get on the throttle early and fairly vigorously and then release my hands so that I'm doing as little with the car as possible on the way up to start finish. So I thought I'd try something a little different for this video and talk my way through the second lap. Uh, there's a third lap here which is more of a qualifying lap, but uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. So coming down into turn two, I try to get my braking done nice and straight. You can see the wheel jitting around there, I think that's just an eye racing thing. I wait on the front end, get on the throttle really early, I, go, I hooked up nicely there in the front end. Then quick brake on the throttle early before the apex and let the car uh, slide out. Don't do much through here. On my best laps I can almost do that flat but I'm not sure if it's faster because you get too much wheel spin. Track to the right side under the bridge, get lined up with my wheels, turn in really late. I kind of missed my apex there but I think it was okay because I got on the throttle really early. As you can see I really let it go out there. I get a plus one every once in a while but you know, if you're trying to go fast, whatever. I really chucked it in there, got a good slide, but it allowed me to get on the th throttle on the way up the, uh, the hill. Trying to get on the brakes nice and late over this hill, uh, staying on the right side. I get pretty straight there, uh, pretty happy with that corkscrew. Uh, letting the car run down there. I got on the throttle really early and abruptly there. As you can see, it caused me to go late onto that curb. Again, really tight on there. You even heard the jump over the little red uh, concrete. And that was a pretty good last turn. Um, it, as you can see, I'm trying to do as little with the car in that last turn. It's really important to not be fighting it through there for a fast lap. And across the line. <laughs>